Hey everyone, um, it's Miss Garcia. Uh, I had promised that I would go back and create a video for Monday's lesson, so I want to go ahead and get that done. Um, so on Monday, I introduced the differences between novels, graphic novels, and comic books because there is a very big difference between them. Um, just a quick recap. In this unit, we've tackled poetry and visual media um, in the forms of movie clips. And in between, we kind of survived the great freeze of, freezing of Texas, so I think we definitely have a strong idea of what grit, determination, and perseverance are. So I think that means we can forge ahead and apply these themes um, to other genres, in particular um, graphic novels and comic books, which makes my heart very happy. And I have to admit, I really wanted to make this video because I was really excited about this presentation, um, and I had a lot of fun making it. So, um... There is more of a difference than just pictures, <laughs> so we really need to make sure that you guys have a good understanding of that. So let's go ahead and um, get started. All right. So, novels, graphic novels, and comic books, what's the difference? So like I said, there is going to be a significant difference. Um, so before we proceed, um, we need to really start at the foundation, and that means knowing the definitions. Um, here I say that we're going to talk about the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Um, hopefully you guys by this time know that that is definitely a dictionary. Uh, so these are some novels. Um, these are just some examples. And according to Merriam-Webster, um, a novel is an invented prose narrative that is usually long and complex and deals especially with human experience through a usually connected sequence of events. Um, that sounds pretty intense, pretty much simplified. It's just a long made up story that connects, uh, that contains imaginary characters and events. Hence, it is fictional. Um, here are some really good ones. There's American Psycho, Don Quixote, Kite Runner, The Great Gatsby, Legend, which is what we, um, we're reading a graphic novel based off of this um, book. And I really love that book and To Kill a Mockingbird. And so then we have graphic novels. Um, according to Mary Webster, it's a story that is presented in comic strip format and published as a book. Um, that's a little too simple. For our purposes, I want us to use the definition that a graphic novel is a complete fictional story containing imaginary characters and events presented in an illustrated format. Here are some um, really well-known and acclaimed graphic novels. We have Mouse, uh, which we had almost read this year. We just ran out of time. Then we have Legend, which is the one we're going to be um, talking about, and Minoma, uh, V for Vendetta, I don't even know how to say that one, the complete Persepolis, <laughs> and then uh, an Amer American-born Chinese. So these are just a couple um, that are pretty well known and um, have won some awards for being really good. Then we have comic books, which Ms. Nerd Garcia um, when she was little, they used to collect, and I still have some. So a comic book, um, according to Merriam-Webster, is a magazine containing sequence of comic strips, usually hyphenated in abbreviated use. That sounds really boring. I promise comic books are not boring. Uh, so for our purposes, we're going to use the definition of a comic book is a part of a larger and longer series or narrative that is told through illustrations. Um, so just so you know, I am a huge Marvel fan. Um, more so than DC. So uh, I have the Avengers up here, X-Men, which I absolutely love and used to collect, Batman, which is DC, Spider-Man, uh, which we will be reading later, and that's the Miles Morales Spider-Man, not the Peter Parker one, the Fantastic Four, and then Miss Marvel, which is something that we're also going to be reading later. So I get that definitions are boring, and so... Um, I just needed to really make sure that you knew the definitions before we could move on to the differences. So here are the differences. So a novel, um, its characteristics, it's a long prose style narrative, so lots of words. Um, narrators with different degrees of knowledge or different points of view, um, such as first person, second person, third person. Um, you have imaginary, imagined uh, characters and events, sometimes semi-fictional characters and events. So it will be based on like a historical event, but they add some fiction in there. Um, that's very popular. And then individualism or freedom of action is evident within the writing and towards the audience. So they can pretty much go in with whatever direction they want 
with their writing um, and they're very individualized, right? Very few books are similar when it comes to that, okay? So the key differences from graphic novels and comic books is there's limited imagery that is not used to drive the um, story forward. Now, they pro provide imagery in the form of text, but there's not anything drawn within the book that really draws it forward. Normally, if there is a picture within a novel, it is just kind of a, a rendition of something that is written. And then the dialogue is provided in quotes, not in speech or thought bubbles or narration boxes. And so we see this often where we see things in quotes and that indicates that somebody is speaking. So a graphic novel, um, this one, its characteristics, it has a clear beginning, middle and end. There's normally an A story or central narrative that's supplemented or added to by an optional B story. So there's a main story with little stories that kind of connect into it. It's very fully developed with characters and personal journeys. It has thematic messaging, uh, so there's definitely a theme, theme woven throughout the entire um, book. And then it's precise, carefully considered dialogue and narration. What separates it really from novels is definitely the images utilized for a vast majority of the storytelling. That you're going to see a lot of imagery, and that way it's very similar to comic books. Dialogue is presented in speech or thought bubbles. And narration boxes can be used to elaborate on the story. So um, comic books characteristics are an uh, excerpt of a larger story. They're long running narratives that last years and sometimes even decades. They're issued normally on a weekly or monthly basis from uh, the publishing company and can be in the form of books or comic strips or uh, pieces of sequential art in magazines and newspapers. One of the biggest differences um, from graphic novels is that they are shorter and often they don't have a clear ending because they are part of a larger series. Um, narratives are based on heightened reality and often through the lens of heroes. So we definitely have heroes when we think about Marvel and DC. Um, those are definitely comic books. Okay, and then um, they can be hard to read in isolation unless you're reading like the very first book of it, which... Um, we will be doing with two of the comic books that I'm going to be presenting. I mean, if you were to pick up an X-Men um, comic book right now and just start reading it, you might have a little bit of difficulty because it has been going on for a couple of decades now. All right. So they are shrouded in differences, but there are some similarities. Um, and down here, just an, uh, you know, SAT word, indubitably. Um, that means impossible to doubt, so it's obvious. Of course, there's going to be some similarities. So the similarities between novels, graphic novels, and comic books. Um, the main key similarity, especially in the United States, is we are going to read them from left to right. I do not want you to get them mixed up with manga. Um, manga, we would read from right to left, but in the United States, we read our novels and our comic books and graphic novels from left to right. They also share complex characters that fit archetypes, and um, they develop these archetypes through characterization. They also utilize internal and external conflicts, which is something we definitely discussed when we were talking about our novels um, in the fiction section. They have detailed backstories, character interactions, figurative speech, which is fancy speech, um, literary devices such as allusions, metaphors, and similes, you definitely have to use inferencing, predicting, and context clues sometimes to figure out what's going on. Um, more so actually with graphic novels and comic books than in novels themselves because you have to utilize the imagery to infer and predict what's going on. So you actually use more context clues sometimes in those types of um, genres than you would like in an actual novel. And they definitely rely on audience buy-in. There is no novel, graphic novel, or comic book that is successful if they don't have audience buy-in. So they definitely have to catch your interest and be um, just really thrilling in a way so that you want to continue reading them. All right. So, um, of course, there's more that you need to know. So let me kind of go over that. So because graphic novels and comic books are based on imagery, um, and they are told through pictures and thought bubbles and speech bubbles, they have a certain format and certain uh, layout and terminology. 
So as you see here, um, this one is a page, and that is what would contain panels, gutters, dialogues, captions, and sound effects. Um, remember that sound effects in graphic novels and comic books are kind of, they're written out so that you understand what's going on. Um, you have frames, they're also known as panels, that contain a single drawing within the page. You have your dialogue balloons that contain communication between and among characters, which are different from thought bubbles because thought bubbles contain the actual character's thoughts. Um, and I'll show you the difference in a second. And then you have captions that contain information about a scene or character. Sometimes those are also considered um, narration boxes. And so um, you can interchange those two terms. Then uh, panels are the squares or rectangles that contain a single scene. So again, that's interchangeable with frame. Um, so sometimes you'll hear it both ways. And then you have gutters, which is basically just the white space that divides up the different panels and frames. Um, as you can see here, sometimes there'll be very little gutter space and then other times it'll be more significant. So it, it, it basically just relies on what is happening within that whole page. Um, so as you can see on the one on the left, uh, the images kind of go throughout the panes, right? Especially the, the bottom one, his hand goes into the gutter and into other frames. Um, and that's kind of showing that that's supposed to be a really important image to where the one on the right has more gutter space. It's more um, dissected and uh, distinctive. All right, um, we were talking about sound effects a minute ago. So yes, um, comic books and graphic novels, they definitely provide you with sound effects. Um, since we've started reading Legend already, you did see some of those today. Um, it just kind of is a way to make sure that we understand what's going on. In literature, we call them onomatopoeias. Um, again, Miss Garcia has a hard time spelling that, so you'll always see me put ono. But this is basically graphic novels and comic books way of using onomatopoeias. When it comes to speech and thoughts, um, they use speech bubbles and thought bubbles, but they kind of have different meanings. Um, so normal speech will just be in your nice little rounded one. Um, sometimes if there's not a lot of space within the frame, they will elongate it, like the second one, or um, they can break it into two parts. Then you have what you're yelling. Sometimes it's that weak, nervous type of speech. The whispers will always be dashes. Um, announcements are always kind of like star-like with lots of spikes. Also yelling is like that. And then when you have thinking, sometimes it'll be just the oval without the little point, um, knowing that it's just in their head. But a lot of times you'll see it as that little cloud. And then the caption or narration will tend to be um, either square or a lot of times it'll be like black. Um, it can be circular, oval, or square. It's, it just depends on um, the illustrator of that particular comic book or graphic novel. So again, I am a huge, huge Marvel fan. Um, I would argue that they have the better heroes. Uh, though me and Coach Johnson seem to disagree on that. Um, I do enjoy some DC, but I do know that this presentation was filled with a ton of Marvel uh, because that's what I love. But I wanted to give you um, an idea that there are other comic books out there and other graphic novels out there. So we have Sandman. Archie is a really popular one um, and has been around for a long time. As you can see, this one was an 80th anniversary. Um, so even though it doesn't have a hero or anything, it's still very, very popular. You have Godzilla. You have Spawn, which was huge um, when I was in school. Um, and I think he it's still around. It's still going strong. And then, of course, The Walking Dead, which was turned into a TV series. So that's actually something that definitely happens when it comes to graphic novels and comic books, as we know. A lot of times they will be adapted into um, movies or TV shows. And sometimes it's a little easier to adapt them because it's you have the imagery right there in front of you. So it's very um, captivating. A lot of times I find it a little bit more interesting, even though I love to read. I, I love a good graphic novel or comic, comic book. 
All right, um, so now you know everything that you need to know about graphic novels and comic books. So go out there and read up a storm. And I do know that that's a little corny and that's fine. I'm allowed to be corny. A uh, storm is my favorite X-Men, especially when I was growing up. So I just had to include her. Um, but I do hope that this unit, it's been rough, it's been long, but we definitely ha uh, handled some poetry and you know we've read some books and I really wanted to give you guys a little bit something different um, as we continue on before Star. So hopefully you'll enjoy the graphic novel that we're reading and you'll enjoy the two comic books that I, I have for us to read when we get back from spring break. I'm excited about it and I'm hoping that you will be too. And if not, you know, hey, at least you can say that in English too, you got to read a wide variety of things and um, actually see a wide variety of things. So that's just my goal is to expand the horizons and, you know, maybe one day you'll find something that you like. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, let me know. Um, and we'll continue reading on Legend. Um, and if you need anything, holler. Bye, guys.